Welcome everybody to the first video in my EV3 programming series. In this lesson, I'll be helping you set up your EV3 and your software, as well as help you get accustomed to the EV3 interface. In order to start programming, you first have to have a base robot built from pieces in the EV3 core set. Instructions for the build will be available in the description below. Next, if you haven't already, download the EV3 programming software. Again, the link will be provided in the description. Now, let's go to the computer and start programming. So this is going to be the interface that you're going to be doing all your programming on. Uh, if you double click on the software that you downloaded from the, from the beginning, you should open up to the screen right here. So what we're going to do to start off, first of all, is we're going to click on this plus button at the top left corner. This basically opens up a new project and you'll actually be able to program. So this is your interface right here and I'm going to be going over essentially what everything is and what you'll basically need to use for the beginning of, I guess, programming. So you have your start button right here. Basically what this does is it acts as the first ever block in your program. Uh, notice how if I bring up any other block, I can only put it behind. I can't put it like in front of it because you always start your program with the start block. So this is going to be your title, which you can rename into a project name. Or I'll just be naming this for now. And you see it changes pretty easily. Uh, down here, you can connect your brick via USB, Bluetooth, or Wi-Fi. I'll be doing that in a second. Uh, you can click on port view. So once your robot is connected, you can see which motors are plugged into which ports and which sensors are plugged into which ports. Uh, brick information, again, once you're connected, you can see how much memory is left on your brick, uh, stuff like that, battery levels and stuff. Um, down here, you have your programming blocks, and this is where you actually get to, uh, like, really program. So, first of all, you have your motor, I guess, action blocks. So, what these do is these will perform specific commands that you can actually see on your robot. Next, you have your flow commands, which allow you to control these action commands and other commands in the future. You have your sensor blocks, which take input from your sensors and can plug them in. You have data, data operations, which essentially are flow blocks, but a little more complicated. Advanced blocks, all of which have a specific use, and you have, lastly, your My Block tab, which should be uh, empty. I'll be covering that in a later lesson. Now, let's turn our attention to the top right corner. So here you basically have your file control stuff, um, like the ability to control your actual interface. So you have your drag block. So once your program is sufficiently large, you can drag around your program to get to specific areas of code. You have your comments block, so you can make comments in your um, program. So for example, I can label the start block. The start. Basically, I can label blocks, I can put them on top, I can move them around the program, just so you guys can see what it does. You have the save, of course, you could save the project. Um, we'll be covering hotkeys a little later. You can, of course, undo, redo, or you can use control Z, control shift Z, whatever floats your boat. You have your zoom magnifier. It's also very helpful to be able to move around your program uh, in a like larger view. And then you have your zoom in block, which of course you need after you've zoomed out. You have your reset zoom, and that's pretty much it. And you, finally, you have your drop down menu. This really doesn't do much, and so you probably won't be using it. Neither is the program experiment list. Um, basically, these right here are going to be the ones that you're going to be using quite often. And yeah, so essentially how you uh, connect your EV3 to your computer is you can go to your settings menu at the very end, go down to Bluetooth, turn on Bluetooth, and then you can connect it with your computer via the computer. So what you do now is you can go to this bottom right corner and then you press, make sure you're on available bricks and then you press refresh. And because your Bluetooth on your actual EV3 is available, um, after searching for a while, it should be able to pop up and you'll be able to connect really easily. We're just going to wait a little here. And we have our EV3 brick, which is named strangely on my computer, but we'll just press um, the Bluetooth button and then it'll connect automatically. Now, in the actual case, there should also be a Bluetooth wire, or not a Bluetooth wire, um, a normal wire, which you can plug into the USB on your computer and then plug into your um, into your actual robot. And so you wanna uh, make sure you press the correct 
just press the center button on your actual um, brick, and then this will pop up, connect. Confirm it one more time on your brick, and you will be connected, like so. Uh, press not now uh, if there is an update. Usually the update is useless anyway, so. Now your robot is connected. You can actually run your programs on your actual robot, and you can do fun things now. So if you scroll down to brick information, you can actually see I can rename the brick, so I'll rename it. Yes. Now that we have our robot connected, we can actually start programming and see the movements on the robot. The first thing we want to do, of course, is to make our robot drive. So if you come down here to the green bar and you press the move tank button, just to click it once and then you can drag it over, um, you can see we have our block here. Um, essentially what this does is these two are the powers of the first motor and the second motor, which is in this case B and C because I have my motors plugged into ports B and C. It also moves forward at one rotation and finally it breaks at the end. Basically what this will do is it'll drive forward at a medium speed for one rotation. I'll be explaining how to calculate rotations and degrees later. Now you can change any of these values simply by clicking on them and either dragging the slider like so or by pressing in the numbers like so. Um, don't try not to change the rotations button or these power ones for now. Um, you, alternatively, you can also click here to select basically how long, like for the seconds you want it, how much, how many degrees you want it, if you want to turn it on infinitely, or you, if you want to just stop the motor uh, first. So after you have this one block, press the download button in the bottom right corner right here, and it should download onto your EV3. And so now we can go to our EV3 and see how this program runs accurately. So now that your robot should be connected, let's go into our actual screen and see how we can run this program. So if you press the right button once, you'll go into the file menu of the uh, robot. And basically you click into whatever you named your program. I named it EV3 tutorial. So click into there and the first program which should be called lesson one, uh, at least for me. If you renamed your something different, by all means, there should only be one file in here. Just play that really quickly. So if I set it down, and I run the program by pressing the center button like so, it should move forward again, one rotation forward. And it does that at a medium speed. So you know that rotation button that we put on our actual EV3? Basically what that will do is move the motors one rotation. If you look at the bottom part where this wing is facing, uh, after the, it runs the program, which is one rotation, you can see that this wing should re return to its exact same position, like, like that. You see, notice how the wing hasn't actually changed its position because the motor command runs it once. So now that we know what the move tank block does, let's do the exact same thing with another block. If you go down here, we can see we have a move steering block. And what this is, is basically the same block, however you see one major difference. On this one, you have the power of the left motor and the power of the right motor. Whereas here, you just simply have the power of the motor. What this does, or this new one, uh, steering move steering block, what it's called, is you can essentially change how much it turns. So if I set this to zero, of course it won't turn. If I set this to a negative value, it will turn uh, accordingly for one rotation again of each motor. And if I turn it to positive, again, it will turn to the right. Um, it turns at actually the same speed um, and it runs the motors at the same speed, uh, although each motor will be different from each other. This is just the speed of the turn, not the speed of the individual motors, whereas the move tank block actually moves the motors at different speeds. So the pros, the pros of this block compared to the pros of the move tank block is that with here, you can make a lot smoother turns. You can essentially link multiple of these together, which we'll get, be getting to it later, um, where you can turn basically in directions that you wouldn't be able to or wouldn't be able to move as smoothly as the move tank block. So let's just run this same command and see what happens. Now, if you should have downloaded the program, which you should have, and you go to your uh, same program, you can actually go to the exact same area, exact same file, which is the EV3 tutorial, click on that, click on lesson one, and then we can put it back down and see what happens. Keep in mind that this should do the exact same thing as the move tank block, except we just use a different code on the computer. And notice how you see, again, this fin is in the same position as it started out in, it moves one rotation, and it moves at the exact same speed. So now let's get back to discussing the differences between these two blocks. Or why would you use one over the other? Simply put, for a majority of situations, you will be using the move tank block significantly more. Why is this? 
Well, it's a lot easier to control the specific motor speeds. For example, I can make this change to 20. And because the left motor moves faster than the right motor, I, of course, will turn a certain direction. Therefore, because you have more control over the move tank block, I personally and many other programmers do prefer the move tank block. However, that being said, if you do prefer using the move steering block, by all means. But in this specific, uh, in this specific programming, like in my channel, basically, I'll be using primarily move tank blocks. So we'll get used, we'll get rid of this by clicking on it and pressing backspace or delete whatever you want. And we're gonna we're gonna be messing around with this block a little more. So first of all, the first thing I want you to do is basically change the speed to whatever speed you desire. Just make sure the right and left motors are exactly the same speed, like so. Next, change the rotations to something maybe different. So I'll do a decimal just to make it move half a rotation. You can make it move two rotations, three rotations, however much you like. And then of course, press the download button in the bottom right. So now that we have our new program, which theoretically should move our robot at a speed of 100 at half a rotation, let's see what it does. Again, let's click back into the program and let's run it so as you can see that moved a lot faster and it also moved rather than a full rotation a half rotation i'm going to show it to you one more time notice the position of this fin how it will move to the other side like so and that's how you know it moved actually a half rotation and as you can see the speed is a lot faster than it is before so now that we know how this block works we can go back and we can see how we can use this block in conjunction with the turn steering block. So let's revert this back to the normal values of 50, 50, and one rotation. And so now let's assume that we want our robot to turn a certain direction. Say we want to turn left for some reason. So grab your move steering block, ideally from the bottom, and then put it here. So now how do we turn at a 90 degree angle uh, just by using two blocks? We can, of course, we can turn this value and we can use the move steering block in order to turn left. So because we want to turn left, right, we want to make the value around 30. So here's the problem, right? We don't know how many rotations it turns in order to turn a 90. The reason is because the wheels, the wheel sizes are different. And if your wheel is larger, you'll need less rotations to turn a 90 degrees than if you use uh, a smaller wheel. Right now we're using a medium wheel. So let's just assume we can put it at negative 45 or something just for now at a speed of 50 and a rotation of one. We can then use the input and the value feedback from this block and this turn in general, measure it and see how we can make it a perfect 90. So of course, press the download button and we'll get to our robot. We have our new program, which this robot will drive forward for one rotation and then turn. Let's see what happens here. So I'm going to run the program and we'll see the around approximately the angle of the robot. And as you can see, that isn't actually a full turn, which means that we either have to increase the rotation, the turn uh, amount, or we have to increase the rotations that it turns. As we can see, this is around a 45 degree turn. So provided if we turn maybe 45 degrees more, we can actually get to that 90 degree position that we so desire. So let's go back to the computer. So now that we know that the turn isn't enough or the rotations isn't enough, let's just approximate how much we uh, want to turn more. So I'm actually going to turn the rotations up uh, to around 1.4 or yeah, or somewhere around there because we realize that the robot maybe turns 55 to 60 degrees, which means that we probably want to add a little more onto the rotation side in order to get it to around 90. Keep in mind that this is a very inconsistent way of actually testing the turn and I'll be covering more turning tutorials in the future onto how to perfectly make a 90 degree turn and lastly how to make my box to make a 90 degree turn and how to use gyro to also help you do an accurate turn. So now if we run this program and we download it we can see the results and we can tweak it a little bit later. Let's this program again to see if we can tweak the values any further. Now, as you can see, our robot actually overturned a little bit, which means that, of course, we have to go back to the computer and tweak our rotations a little more. So I did a little experimenting, and it turns out that the value of around 1.15 does the trick, at least for a 45 degree angle. So I'm going to quickly show you what it does. And basically, this is going to be the program to move forward one rotation and turn 90 degrees how this program actually runs. 
As you can see, our robot is in around a 90 degree configuration right now, which means that we have achieved our initial goal of moving forward from this area back here to this position right now, just by using two basic blocks. I hope you enjoyed the very first lesson in our EV3 programming series. Next time, we'll be checking out the flow of blocks, where we can control what we've learned today in order to control our robot even better. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell button in order to be notified when new videos are posted.